Hi there, my name is Lena. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be sharing with you my pre-med journey at Emory University. Specifically, I will be talking about how the curriculum is like, how the research is like, how the clinical experiences are. There's also a part two to this video, which I will be going over some of the campus resources for pre-med, what the community in general is like, and also what kind of volunteering activities or community activism activities that you could participate in. So rumors say that Emory is a pretty preppy school. People are either pre-business or pre-med. To some extent, I think that is true. However, it also means that because there is a lot of people who are pre-med here, there's also many opportunities and many resources for pre-med. You also get different personalities, different niches of pre-meds. I graduated in 2019, entered Emory University at 2015. I declared a neuroscience and behavioral biology major and an ethics minor. Going into Emory, I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. It wasn't until the summer between my first and second year of college where I worked as a clinic assistant in one of the underserved clinics in California that I realized I want to do a career in medicine. So please keep in mind for this video, for the experiences that I share, it's limited and also might be dated since I already graduated in 2019. I took chemistry in my first year of college. I took organic chemistry for the whole year and also biology for the whole year during my sophomore year. During my third year, I took biochemistry, human physiology, also physics. Sociology and psychology are not mandatory, but some of the schools really recommend it. I took sociology during my third year of college and psychology, I used AP credit. These are the general requirements usually for pre-med. There's also English writing requirements I would highly suggest for the school that you're interested in, go to their websites and see what kind of requirements of courses do they have. So the general chemistry class, organic chemistry class, and biology class, all with lab components, are famously known as the weed out classes because there are a lot of people coming into Emory wanting to study pre-med, but after these classes, they decided that they're no longer interested in a career in medicine. But for these classes in general, they are pretty hard. However, the specific difficulty definitely depends on your professor. The grading curve might differ, the teaching model might differ, and also the specific level of difficulty differs according to professor. By teaching model, I specifically mean either the flip classroom or the traditional lecture style. If you don't know what a flip classroom is, here's an image about it. A teacher only lectures probably for a very small portion of the class and for the other half it's a lot of hands-on learning go through a series of discussion questions and answer them together as a group it's also known as problem-based learning which is used in a lot of medical schools right now so I took my general chemistry class at Emory in a flipped classroom style however for all the other classes I had a traditional lecture style all of these classes had lab components to it which I personally personally find the hardest. Despite the relatively larger sizes in these classes, the professors are usually pretty accessible. I remember my organic chemistry teacher knew all of our names, all of the students in his sessions, and would cold call us during the lecture. There's a lot of resources offered, such as one-on-one -on -one peer tutoring, also teacher assistants holding weekly review sessions of the lecture. There's also office hours that all of the professors hold weekly, twice or three times a week. For biochemistry class and human physiology class, it was really helpful for me to take human physiology and learn all about the organ systems prior to taking MCAT. And on the side note, I really love the religion and philosophy classes here at Emory. In conclusion about the courses for pre-med offerings, they really provide you with a strong foundation for things you need to know. However, be prepared to work hard. There are a lot of opportunities for research here at Emory. Specifically, there's the summer undergraduate research program where you could conduct research all summer with a grant. There's a research partners program to work with a professor in the lab for around 10 hours per week. There's also federal work study in different labs. Also, some of my classmates have done this, which is going straight to a professor and ask them if they could take you on as a volunteer in their labs. To be honest, there is a great chance that you will be rejected, but who cares? 
it never really hurts to try. I didn't start research until my second year of college where I participated in the research partners program. I personally was really interested in traumatic brain injuries. I was interviewed at the lab and by one of the postdocs and I eventually got the position. So I started to learn all of the basic lab techniques, including Western blot, immunohistochemistry, how to handle mice, how to implant electro. And during this time, I was using my work study to get paid for. So after my second year, I did the summer undergrad research program. got paid to do full-time research, eight hours a day from Monday to Friday. And that was the time where all of my energy and focus was on research. I really strengthened my skills and came up with my independent project during that time. With the help of my mentor, during my third year and fourth year of college, I was getting credits for doing research. It's usually three to four credit classes, and usually these credits, you get a letter grade, and that really boosts your science GPA up. The third year was a continuation of the research I did in the summer, finished up the experiments, and during my fourth year, I participated in an honors research program. So for the honors research program, you're no longer really doing experiments. Rather, you're trying to gather all of the data, process all of the data, come up with the resulting conclusion, and your main focus is to write an honors thesis. Later on, you have to form a committee of at least three members, including faculty, people who are familiar with the field, to present your research to them and orally defend your research. At the end, they give you an evaluation whether you earn highest honors, high honors, or honors. With my supportive mentors and PIs, again, was very fortunate to publish my research after spending the whole year post-graduation revising it and sending out it to different journals, getting it rejected, and also getting a lot of feedback for me to revise it. In conclusion, there's tons of opportunities here. You just really need to find the research that you are interested in. It's not easy. I think I was very thankful for my mentors and the faculty members that I met here that kept me going when the times I wanted to give up because research itself is hard. compared to research and also the curriculum. The clinical experiences are relatively limited here at Emory. I think that is the case for any undergrad institution. I'm gonna share with you three of the most important clinical experiences for me at Emory. The first one is being an emergency medical technician. Second one is physician shadowing during the summer. And then third one is a physician assistant position during one of the classes. So for the first one is training to become an emergency medical technician. This was a year long course. I took it during my second year of college. It does not count as course credits. so. It, the coursework is on top of what you already take as an undergrad. It is a very rigorous training. You're not only taking tests, going to lectures, but also doing a lot of hands-on stuff. You have to go on ambulance shifts for 12 hours. You also get opportunities to go to the Emory emergency room and do a 12-hour shift as a EMT. So those clinical experiences during this program was super cool and at the end if you pass the written exam and psychomotor exam testing your clinical hands-on skills you do get a license to work as emergency medical technician after that you could work in the school community respond to all of the 911 calls nearby on the Emory campus so for the second one there is physician shadowing because Emory College is just right next to the Emory Hospital how I got but my physician shadowing opportunity was through my PI, the principal investigator of my research lab. I asked him if he could connect me with some of his colleagues or doctors that he has worked with before. He gladly replied yes, so I got the pleasure to shadow emergency medicine physicians as well as neurology physicians. 
at Grady Memorial Hospital. And for the last clinical experience here, I really want to talk about the clinical neurology class. It is a class I took the last semester of college. It's limited to 12 people and only open to neuroscience and behavioral biology majors. You do meet Wednesday afternoons for three hours with your professors and peers. The shadowing experiences, it is four hours a week. You go into the Emory Bank Brain Health Center in Shadow a Neurologist, the same one for the whole semester. After each shadowing experiences, you present the case of the patient to all of your peers during that Wednesday afternoon. So the presentations to your peers every week were kind of like grand rounds where you talk about the patient history, the medical history, pathophysiology, any diagnostic tests as differential diagnosis with some of the physicians present. So you're really feeling that like you're a medical care provider. I got more interested in clinical neurology after the class for sure. So these are the clinical experiences that I've participated in Emory. I know for other students, there are other opportunities in terms of clinical shadowing. I've heard about being volunteers at the children's hospital, being a patient advocate. I think the curriculum is rigorous. The research experiences, there are tons and you just have to find the right one that fits your interest. Clinical experiences, they're out there if you really look for it. And while doing some of the research on the Emory official website, I found that more than half of the undergraduates here participate in research, so that might be a good statistic to know. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'll be specifically talking about the campus resources, about the volunteering experiences, and also how the pre-med community is like in general at Emory. I'll also be making videos on the specific aspects of research clinical experiences that I've mentioned in future videos. So please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel to follow along with my journey. I will see you next time.